All right, welcome back. We are on to number four on this problem. Um, we, I did get Desmos set up. So here's what I did. I went ahead and graphed that parabola in red, um, and I graphed x equals two because I notice I have a denominator where my um, where my domain is restricted. I can't let x equal positive two. So I graphed that as well. And now, so when you zoom out, you'll notice that I've got a parabola and I've got um, a, a line right there. I didn't really need to graph that line yet, but there it is. Um, and so when I turn on this other, um, when I turn on that new rational function, notice that parabola and the, the green line and the red line and then the red curve are serving as um, asymptotes for that rational function. So as we, as we get close, um, as we're close to that that vertical asymptote, as we're close to x equals 2, we don't get to be very close to the red line. I mean, define close, I guess. But but the farther out we go, the the it's not ever, it's, it's still an asymptote, so it doesn't ever reach it, but it does get closer and closer and closer, and it starts to model that shape. Okay, so that's what we want to look at with that one. Um, st uh, state the domain. The domain of f is going to be... Um, the domain of f, did I say that before? No, I didn't do it before. Okay, f has a domain um, domain of negative infinity to positive infinity. Its range, how low does it go? I don't know. Let me come back to um, I'm going to take advantage of. Um, oh, it's, it goes as low as 2. My y value is 2, so its range is... Um, Range goes from two. I lied. That should be a hard bracket. To infinity. Okay. The domain uh, for g, the domain is going to go from negative infinity to two, and then it's going to pick it up again from two to infinity. And when we talk about the, um, this one gets kind of weird. When we talk about its range, um, actually, this one doesn't get quite as weird because the there's no real gap here. The one from before, the last video, which I should have talked about and I didn't, um, I did take a picture, though. If I ask you for the range of the blue right here, I will either give you a calculator or you, you have to either know, a, you have to have a calculator or no calculus to find its range. Um, so you have to know how high does it go, what's the, what's the y value of that point, and then what's the y value of this point. Um, and so you either need a calculator or a calculus. And since I'm teaching you pre-calculus, um, I'd either, if it's a non-calculator thing, I wouldn't expect you to know the range of that. And I'm not overly concerned about it. Um, this one, though, you'll notice that the, this, this piece right here, um, the one in black, ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. This right through here, like there's no restriction, the, the range just keeps going. So its range is all reals, but we kind of got lucky on that one. Okay, um, coming back, they, the, see below. Well, maybe it's, yeah, see page four. Um, and then describe what I see. I see that it, the, the, it's got a, it has a, um, I see a parabolic asymptote. Okay, because it was approaching that parabola. So now that what they want me to do is they want me to write this where they're both polynomials. So we're going to do that same process. It's a little bit more complicated for this one. So we have this part over 1 is getting multiplied by it needs x minus 2 in its denominator. And then I have plus 1 over x minus 2. So see, a little bit more complicated. What do I get when I... Um, hit pause, go multiply, and then see if I multiplied correctly. And if I did... Fantastic, and if I didn't, sorry, deal with it. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I only have so much emotional energy for certain things, so, you know, it is what it is. x cubed, I see a minus 2x squared and a minus 6x and so minus 8x squared. I see a plus 12 and a plus 11, so plus 23x. And then I see a minus 22 and a plus 1 from the other term, all over x minus 2. And so the final answer, this g of x, would be equal to x cubed minus 8x squared plus 23x minus 21 over x minus 2. So here's what changes on this one. Um, this previous problem back here, we had a degree of 2 divided by a degree of 1. Well, now we've got a degree of 3 divided by a degree of 1. Well, 3 
uh, x cubed divided by x is going to give me x squared. And that's how we know that we have a parabolic asymptote. So if I were to divide, say I was started, say I wanted to come back instead of going this way. Oh, I lied. Well, instead of having this right here, let's say I wanted to, oh, I'm messing up my notes. What was that supposed to be? Three. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, instead of having this, say that they're going to start me over here like this. So if I want to go in this direction, I have to synthetically divide. So I would say 1, negative 8, 23, and negative 21, and a positive 2. Uh, can I multiply? Yes, barely. Okay. So this gives me that x squared minus 6x plus 11 plus 1 over x minus 2. And hopefully that's exactly what I have. Oh, good. Okay, it matches. Okay, so this is how that works. Um, the slant or the parabolic asymptote it happens when it's top heavy and you have to divide. Typically, we do synthetic division to get back there. Um, hopefully, this was a nice um, reminder of what you learned in Algebra 2. And, help, and hopefully... Um, it made sense to see the transformations and to see how different things happened um, when, we, when we transform our graph and then we write the equation. Let me know if you have questions. Go practice. Good luck.